Hello, I'm Brett. I'm the Mensa mechanic, and yes, I am a member of Mensa. Like many Mensans, I enjoy solving puzzles. I tend to gravitate more towards the physical puzzles, such as fixing cars, and today we're going to solve the puzzle of aligning the front end of a 1967 Mustang. So as we do this, let's take a look at the setup. There are three things you want to align when doing a front end alignment, the camber, the caster, and the toe. So the camber is the angle of the wheel as relation to this plane here, so straight up and down. So if the wheel is angled out like this, the bottom is further out than the top, that's considered negative camber. If it's angled in, that's considered positive camber. The caster is the angle of the wheel in relation to the imaginary line that goes through the upper and lower ball joint or the axis upon which it turns. Which you, in relation to where the tire contacts the road. If the axis were straight up and down and it contacts the road right straight below that imaginary line, that would be zero caster. If you tilt the axle around which it rotates, such that the contact patch is ahead of that imaginary line where the imaginary line hits the ground, that's considered negative caster. If you rotate it this way, the contact patch is behind where the imaginary line hits the ground, that's considered positive caster. So what, what do you want on a car? Well, it depends on how you're going to drive the car. I like to drive this car like I did on the track and so I want the car to be able to handle and so if you want the car to be able to corner well you need to set negative camber and why so let's say this car was turning right alright you can see this is the left front tire as the car turns right the momentum of the car is moving forward the car now turns right that momentum wants to continue in a straight line suddenly this tire is presented to the road in a way that wants to make the tire stretch basically and buckle back on itself and so what will happen is the weight of the car will come this way this tire is now turned the car is still moving and the weight of the car is moving in this direction the wheels pointed in that direction the weight comes over the wheel the suspension compresses because the weight is now moving to this side of the car and the tire will want to the car will want to roll the tire up on its side and you'll lose traction so to counter that you want the tire presented in such a way that it's already angled towards the road so as it comes the weight comes over the car and tries to roll the tire it's rolling it flat on its tread also and another thing that happens is as the suspension moves up and down the suspension will compress in, in cornering as it compresses you also gain negative camber so you'll get some additional negative camber as a result of the suspension travel but what you want to do is you want to counter that tendency to roll the tire up on its edge because as soon as it gets on its edge you'll lose most of the traction of the tire so you want negative camber. I usually like a degree of negative camber. So it depends on, of course, what's the downside of that? Well, the downside of that is you might wear the inside of your tires faster. So it depends on, again, how you're going to drive the car. Caster. What do you want for caster? Well, you want positive caster. You want the contact patch where the wheel touches the road to be behind the imaginary line upon which the wheel rotates. reason for that is consider a shopping cart. Those wheels are castered on the front. If you start pushing the shopping cart, the caster will naturally align the wheels such that the wheels point in a straight line. So that causes, that's what causes self-centering of steering is the caster of the, of the steering. So it also causes some resistance as you try to corner. What you don't want is the car to easily turn and overturn, tendency to overturn into that, into that corner. You want some resistance there. And the caster is what does that. And so you want positive caster. I'll go for probably about a degree and a half, maybe two degrees. Some people like more aggressive. Downside is this is a manual steering car. The more positive caster you give, the harder it is to turn the wheel when you're sitting stationary. And so, you know, I've got to balance the, uh, the handling with uh, being able to just move around parking lots. In 1967, when Ford introduced this car, they actually specified camber, or caster, I'm sorry, that was actually, could be any, set from negative to a little bit positive. So why would they set negative 
caster. Because the faster you go down the road with negative caster, the lighter the steering gets to the point where it's almost scary. You know, and it will not self-center. If you turn a little bit, it'll stay there. So you have to center it yourself. And so um, why would they want negative caster set? Well, back then with manual steering, and you had to be able to sell the car to any number of people, some of those people didn't have the upper arm strength to turn the wheels uh, when it sat stationary, so they had to lighten up the steering, basically. So what they did was they would set negative caster to do that. So we're going to set positive caster. The toe, which is the last setting that you do, is basically, do the wheels point towards each other, or do they point away from each other? That's toe in, that's toe out. Usually on a front wheel or a back rear wheel drive car, you'd set toe in, as the car is resisting rolling down the road, it tends to take all the slop out of the steering joints, which will cause the tires to kind of go straight. And so that's why you set a toe in, an initial toe in. And so how do we measure all this? So let's walk around the other side of the car. We have a number of gadgets that we use. I've got these that I use for setting toe. And we'll show you those in a second, a little bit actually. But to set the camber and the caster, I use this gauge here basically a digital level. When you start by taking this tripod attachment and attaching it firmly to the wheel so that it is exactly plumb to the wheel. And this little trick helps hold it in place because despite all of the tightening and it will just fall off the wheel. There's nothing holding it on the wheel other than interference. And so this run through the, uh, the spokes of the wheel and then this bungee cord holds it in place. And so you just turn it on and you can directly measure cast camber. And so if I were to measure, well you have to zero at first, but if I were to measure camber it would show the camber angle. This is currently set at about a degree, about a degree, 1.2 negative. So I'm going to set it to the positive. To measure caster, if caster actually as you turn the wheel, if there's any caster present at all, it will actually cause a camber angle change as you turn the wheel. If you think about it, if you set 90 degrees of caster so that the wheel is exactly like this, and then you turn the wheel, it'll turn just pure camber. It doesn't turn the car in any direction other than turn the camber out. So if there's any angle at all, any caster angle at all, as you turn it, the wheel will also gain and lose camber. And so what this does is turn the wheel through 40 degrees of turn and measures the difference in angle camber angle the difference uh, that happens over that turning radius and then that is the caster of the wheel. To make all that possible I have outfitted this lift with these turntables. I did that a number of years ago. If you look below you'll see an actual axle upon which these turntables are pretty substantial actually and there's grease under here so that they'll turn easily and I have marked each one. This is minus 20 degrees, this is centered, this is plus 20 degrees. And if you're going to measure caster, you start by turning the wheel in the direction of the wheel. So if this is the right front, we turn right first. Go to this mark, zero this gauge, turn it back 40 degrees to this mark, level this back out again and read the caster directly. And so that's how we'll be measuring caster. Now since caster is a measure of uh, the angular change in camber as you rotate the wheel, the, um, it doesn't much matter what the static camber is to start with. You know, you're not going to affect the caster theoretically. But on this car, how do you adjust all this? On a 1967 Mustang, you have adjustments that look like this. You've got a lower control arm, you have an upper control arm. In between them is a spindle riding on two ball joints, lower ball joint, upper ball joint. This is the imaginary turning axis upon which the wheel will turn. Here are your tie rod ends. This car has been outfitted with a retrofitted Flaming River rack kit. So this is actually a rack and pinion steering, which is a retrofit. The car was originally had a steering box and a pitman arm and a bunch of other attachments are, which are gone now. And then this is a global west lower. This is a different aftermarket uh, lower control arm. This is an aftermarket strut rod, but not uh, dissimilar from the original st strut rod. This is a strut rod, and you can see that it is at an angle 
and you adjust caster right here. So you loosen these bolts, you turn this turnbuckle, and it lengthens or shortens this rod, which causes the lower control arm to come forward, and that will increase positive caster, or go backward, and that will increase negative caster. But as you do that, you can also see, since it's drawing it this way, it's also going to draw it in some. And so if I'm drawing it this way, it's going to pull the wheel in some, which is also going to change the camber angle. And so the recommendation is set the caster first, since that's going to affect the camber angle, then set the camber. A lot of people will do, do camber first, then set caster. Set caster first, then set the camber angle. And when you're all done with all of that, the toe is set by changing the length of uh, here. This is a threaded rod. You just turn this and it moves the tie rods in and out basically and changes, it turns the wheels basically. And we'll show you how to do that last. First we'll start with ca caster. And I've already measured this caster, it's actually negative right now, so we're going to have to bring the wheel forward. We want to rotate, if you look, look at the imaginary line, you can see it's kind of pointed down here. So there's the imaginary line, here's the contact patch, the imaginary line is the contact patch is ahead of the imaginary line, that's negative caster. We've got to change that and bring this forward. Push that line here, put the wheel behind it. So it's a series of wrenches. This particular, now this is reverse threaded. This coupler as it turns, it tightens here and, and, and loosens, uh, tightens here, so it tightens in two directions by turning in a single direction. So one of these is reverse threaded, it happens to be this one is reverse threaded. So instead of um, loosening it this way, it's righty loosey. This is the opposite. So push this in this direction, that loosens this. And we're bringing it forward, so we got to loosen this a bit. And this is going to have to be loosened too. This goes in the direction you would expect. We're just going to take a guess at how far and we have to measure it. So this direction should bring it in. And we'll kind of eyeball it. rotate around that axle right now. It's pulling the lower ball joint almost in line with it now. And we're going to have to bring it some more. And we may have to go to the end of its travel. No, we've got just a little bit of an angle right now. We'll go to there. That's an eyeball spot snug it so that it doesn't move while you're in the middle of making the measurement. So run these jam nuts up and snug it. Alright, we've got a set. Let's go measure it. First step is we turn the wheel to the right, 20 degrees. We've got it centered currently, so we want to go 20 degrees to the right. So that, I know that happens to be one full turn, and then right about there. And we overshot it just a bit, right about there maybe, turn and a quarter. Nope, still a little bit more. Back it up just a tad more. All right, gauge on. We want to zero it at this point. Zero it. Zero, we want to be in caster mode. Now this is in caster mode when the, when the degrees are flashing. It's in caster mode. Difference is, instead of measuring absolute degrees, it's going to measure the difference from this point 
to wherever it ends up and it's going to end up here and so however many degrees that ends up uh, that's going to be the um, final resting place let's make sure that this is yeah that's on there good all right we're going to turn the wheel left now 40 degrees so let's back to center and it's going to be about there a little bit more I think it's got to be right around there actually just a hair more now we center this bubble so that the level is level and we look at the reading and we're just about where I want to be I mentioned somewhere around two degrees 1.8 so we're going to call this good actually and um, lock it down here and we're going to do the same on the other side lock it down at 1.8 but before we move to the other side we got to set the camber so let's first lock this down It's locked down and again by eyeballing it you can see that the patch sits behind the imaginary line if we just draw it in our minds you can eyeball it and see that it's got positive caster right now let's see what that did to the camber because we're going to now change camber for that we center the wheel again you want to measure camber with the wheel centered and, uh, that changing caster may have changed the centering point of the wheel a little bit because it's going to draw the wheel forward in the wheel well. All right. We level it. Now we've been in caster mode, and who knows what angle this thing is going to take is at zero point, so we got to re zero this. And so, to do that, turn it on, hold the button until it turns off. And that'll put it in calibration mode when you turn it back on. Turn it on, and it'll be in calibration mode. Step one, zero, hold it still. Step two, zero it, hold it still. It's at zero now. Put it in there, and it reads directly. 1.2 degrees, you've got a little thing here and a little thing there saying that the bottom of the wheel is tilted out, it's tilted in this direction, that's negative camber. I want a degree, but I'm going to leave it go at 1.2, that's close enough. Next wheel. Now, what happens if you got the caster too, too much different between the sides? Well, the car is going to pull. The steering's going to pull, it's not going to go straight ahead. It's going to pull in the direction of the more positive caster that you've got. You can be off a little bit, a few degrees maybe, or a few tenths of a degree, I should say, not a few degrees, a few tenths of a degree, but not too far. So if you don't want the car to pull, take your time and make sure you get the caster setting correct. And since we have zeroed this, we got to recalibrate it. Caster mode off. Hold it off, so go into calibration mode. On, calibration mode. Step one, step two, now notice I'm holding it at the surface perpendicular to the angular measurement that we're making. Don't want to hold it this way, we're not measuring angles that way, camera's measured this way, so that's, that's the, surf, the level surface you want to measure. 1.2 still, yeah, so camera hasn't changed, so good. All right, last step is toe. How do we do toe? Turn this off, remove this contraption, and we're gonna use different contraptions for toe. Toe is done with tape measures. One way to do it. For that, use these. Now these were earlier versions of camber, caster, and toe measurement units, but uh, that digital level is much more accurate in terms of camber and caster measurements. One thing I did before, 
because I had the steering aligned perfectly in terms of the car. You know, when the steering wheel's pointed straight ahead, the car goes straight ahead. That's a challenge to get that right. That is, um, you know, one of the things that can happen when you do this alignment is you, if you change, and we did, the camber angle, that change, especially the camber angle, that changes the relationship of the tie rod end. And so you're gonna and actually push the tire in or out doing that. And so what I did before I started this is I took this guide here square to the wheels like it is. So we're gonna use the measure. And I took a straight edge, in this case a level, and I marked here what straight ahead is for this tire. And you see we're not pointed straight ahead anymore because that level should be meet exactly between there. This tire is pointed out a little bit from where it was. And that's, that agrees with this marking down here. And you see the steering wheel is pointed straight ahead right now. So we're going to have to make some toe adjustments anyway because we did change the angle of the wheels. And what we're going to go for is we're going to go for a measurement of a sixteenth of an inch difference between the measurement here and the measurement here across the underside of the car. So we're going to measure basically these measuring points, and this is for a fourteen inch wheel right there. These slots have been put in here for us by the designers of this for fourteen inch wheels. We're going to measure across to these slots and, the, and take the difference. And the difference needs to be a sixteenth of an inch shorter on the front for toe-in than on the rear. All right, so how do we adjust these? Now, these are a little bit different than the factory. The factory has a turnbuckle here, similar to the way this adjusts. You turn it, one is reverse threaded, the other one's not. Uh, but since I've adapted this Flaming River um, tie rod end, I've actually adapted uh, spherical bearings here uh, for the tie rod ends uh, and I had a, a special adapter made for me by a local machine shop to adopt 5 8 inch thread to 11 16 thread that Ford uses. Now they make these tie rod ends in 11 16 now you can get them but they only have an inch and a half of um, threaded rod and you can see I needed the extra inch that my adapters gave me so I'm using the adapters still. So this is a jam nut that jams the adapter on. Loosen that jam nut. Other way. This is not reverse. So these are full, uh, standard right hand thread. Both of them, both sides. And we want to go out. So that's all. So basically, you just turn this to loosen or to move it away, and we'll keep turning it until that. we're getting further and further. Let's see where that puts us. Uh, I think we went too far. 74 even. And probably going to be a set eighth of an inch toe in, which is okay. Ford specifies between an eighth and a quarter. Most people want a sixteenth, especially if you're running um, good spherical aftermarket bearings. Yeah, we are an eighth of an inch toe in, towed in right now. Why are we doing all this? Well, this Flaming River rack looks new, doesn't it? It's brand new. The original one I put on the car some 15 years ago, maybe, I'm guessing. I can't remember exactly when. It's been on the car a while. It just broke. Broke it right right here in a tie rod and just sheared right off. Fortunately, I wasn't going anywhere. I was trying to steer the thing in the driveway. And the thing just fell apart. And so, when they sent the new one, guess what? These arms are about an inch longer than the previous version. So I had to adjust these tie rod ends to make that work. And it also changed the toe, it changed everything. So, um, and I wasn't happy with the original settings. I had um, 
you know, different characteristics turning right and turning left. I knew something wasn't right with the camera caster. Now, why do I do it myself? Well, partly because I like doing st stuff myself, but when I take this to an alignment shop, they're going to put it back to Ford specs. 1967 Ford specs, and I don't want negative caster anywhere near negative caster. I want performance, and they won't do it because they go by their machine, and their machine is all computerized. They dial 167 Mustang, and it knows exactly what the factory settings are, and those aren't the settings I want. So I've um, got no choice. This car has a 363 Ford Racing, built on a Ford Racing big door block. I recently built this engine. Uh, I haven't dynoed it. I've seen builds claim to be 500 horsepower. It has a lot of power. And uh, the car, therefore, needs to be able to handle that power. And so I definitely need some steering. It's not as, I've got a 2012 Shelby that I've run at the track. Uh, and there's no, this is nowhere near the handling capability of that Shelby, and that Shelby is nowhere near as good as a VET or a Porsche, but, um, but it does handle a lot better than this car. But I like this car to at least handle reliably. And hopefully we got it. That's it. 67 Mustang, camber, oh, how to set the camber, we didn't set it, but if we were to set it, the original Mustang, this 67, has a, a, a centric cam bolt right here. Basically, you loosen it. And as you turn the bolt, you can see the cam. There's a cam here. As you turn it, it moves this this point in and out. That changes the camber angle directly. So that's a direct adjustment to camber angle. Now, the downside is if you don't get this good and tight, or even if you do get it good and tight, since it's sitting on a cam and it can rotate, it can, over time, with through suspension travel, change and lose your camber setting. So. They have lockout plates that you can buy that have bolts or holes drilled in certain spots to kind of set your camber permanently. Uh, I tried one of those, but it looks like too much trial and error to get those right, so I don't have the patience for it. So, and I don't run the car on the track, so uh, if it turns into a problem, I do have those plates I can put on later. Caster you've seen, toe you've seen. Those are the, uh, the three adjustments and how you do it on a 67.